I say, well, this is Mike Tyson at his best, and this is how, this is the fighter that I expect to fight when I fight Mike Tyson. They're going to be in for a lot of trouble. I think that Tyson's so used to going in and, and racking guys on the chin and knocking them cold and walking away. Um, I think Smith just proved the point that, you know, the kid is not uh, invincible. I'm always there to fight. I'm always there to get the people their money's worth. He hold both the belts. So I respect him. I have to respect him because he's a champion. But the night of the fight, after the bell ring, I have no respect for him at all. Well, those are strong words from a man whose career has been marred by drugs, a flirtation with the pop world, and a broken marriage. Much of Thomas's renewed confidence is down to just one man, the maestro Angelo Dundee, the man behind Muhammad Ali, and the man who steered Sugar Ray Leonard to that historic comeback victory over Marvin Hagler. Dundee is not that impressed with Mike Tyson. Tyson don't belong in the same category as a Pinkland Thomas. And I, mean, I don't mean that sarcastically or be, berating a, a, a Tyson. Tyson hasn't been to school yet. Now, all the qualities of a, a Pinkland Thomas beats Tyson. He's got the best jab I've seen since Liston. It's a crushing jab. It, it go right through him. All I can tell you is that him in the right frame of mind, him in the proper conditioning, him not thinking of other things, it's a heck of a fight. He's the best heavyweight out there. So Thomas's hard road back has brought him to Las Vegas and a demanding date with the youngest ever world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. The WBA and WBC titles are at stake. And now with nearly 14,000 fight fans assembled in the outdoor arena of the Las Vegas Hilton, let us join at ringside the former world lightweight champion, Jim Watt, and leading off, Reg Guthridge. So the Rocky theme they're playing then for the entrance of Iron Mike Tyson. And now that... Uh... Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard are out of the picture. This is the man who's carrying the torch of boxing these days, the main man. Now, this is obligatory to carry these belts. This is not Tyson's own idea. Both ruling bodies wanted. There it is, no dressing gown, sweating like anything, ready for business. What a fighter this man is. 20 years old, you remember. I use the word man advisedly. Real throwback, isn't he, to the old bare-knuckle fighters. No trims, no tassels, no dressing gowns. And walks in there, and Jim, it looks as though he's already worked 15 rounds. The sweat bouncing off him. Yeah, it's, uh, he's obviously done a good little workout in the dressing room before he came out. That, that's one of the things you have to admire about Tyson. He starts right at the beginning of the fight and never stops. So he's obviously got himself warmed up nicely. Introducing the Little Carter. Fighting out of West Los Angeles, California. Weighing in at 217 and three quarter pounds, with a professional record of 29 wins, one defeat, one draw, and 24 KOs. He's rated number one in the world by the WBC and is a former champion of that organization. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. And in the red corner, fighting out of the Catskills in New York, weighing 218 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career with 29 wins, no defeats, 26 KOs. He is the WBC, WBA, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. So referee Carlos Padilla then, 55th uh, title fight for him. And there's the statistical rundown. Remember, 20 years of age, that's all he is, uh, Mike Tyson. In there with a big man of 29. Just wiping down. He came in absolutely bouncing there with uh, perspiration, Tyson. But that's uh, some water Padilla seems to think. He says, don't put too much grease on to Kevin Rooney, the trainer. Okay, Tyson, Thomas, you're going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kind of foul. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that understood? Seconds come out fighting. So there we go then. The final words from uh, Padilla. I doubt whether these boxers really hear any of those words. They've got other things on their mind. 
And there he is, the main man then in the fight game today, Mike Tyson. And Pinkland Thomas has a pole of a left-hand punch and he's going to need it. It's supposed to be a solid jab, a sort of prerequisite to throw a slugger off his stride. But can he stop this bull from coming in? who's still burning for not looking good in his last fight with James Bonecrusher Smith. Oh, and he's opening up at the start now, Mike Tyson. He does love those one-rounders. Thomas won't be found wanting when it comes to a bit of gameness. He's proved that in the past. He's only had one really poor fight when he lost his championship to Trevor Burbick. Very troubled, he said, about that. Seemed to genuinely fancy his chance uh, against Tyson, but uh, that didn't sway the odds makers at six to one on Tyson. And what a start by this incredible young champion, the youngest in history. He really must have worked out in the dressing room now. This left hook there, he switches that well. It doesn't look as though that left-hand jab that uh, corner man Angelo Dundee has been telling Thomas to use is going to be much use to him. Now, this is the Tyson we really know, isn't it? Trying to wipe out that memory of the bone crusher Smith waltz, and he's really laying it to Thomas at the start. The crowd loving it, Thomas hating it. 15 stone, eight and three quarter pounds of absolute mind, muscle, menace, Sir Tyson. Who's going to stop him midway through the first? Jim, what a fighter, Tyson. Tremendous power he has, Reg. He does, doesn't pay anybody any respect whatsoever. He just comes straight through, pays no attention to what they're doing, and then nothing that Thomas has shown so far is going to discourage him. Tyson's last two opponents are simply throws on the night with no belief in themselves. A lot depends on how much belief uh, Thomas has tonight. But to whatever they come in with, I think uh, Tyson's putting a dent on that already. Well, he's not going to get tangled up at close quarters in this fight, Tyson, as he did with Smith. He's going to learn to break the spider's web and not get entangled in it, and he's really unloading some terrific punches. And he'll do well to get over this round now, Pinkland Thomas. Well, you can talk a good fight, but when you get in with this fellow, you can uh, throw all that out. As we get the countdown for the end of the first, can he hang in there for a while? As I said, he's got plenty of guts, Pinkland Thomas. He's standing up well, considering he's taken the full force of those punches. Well, a man, remember, who's two stone heavier than the great Rocky Marciano. Two stone and over a stone heavier than Joe Frazier was. And he's in there, Padilla. He's making sure there's no after-bell punches this time. Well, is this man pleased to see that school? Now, what's Angelo going to do, do now to pull him together? So the doctor's looking in the corner there, and Dundee is very upset by that. That's unusual, Jim, isn't it? it hasn't taken a knockdown, and a flip from Anski, the doctor, came in there. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, well, he took a tremendous amount of punches, bang on the chin. Everyone, every punch that Tyson throws is a jawbreaker, and uh, Pinkland took quite a few of them clean on the chin. Obviously, the, the doctor was a bit concerned, but I don't think he did uh, Pinkland's cause any good by coming up and interrupting in the corners because he needs every second in there he can get. Well, the overhead look at that, and he really is tottering, but did well to stand up. making sure he hasn't got too much uh, grease on there, Thomas. And now he's shouting at the referee as we come out for round two there, the trainer. Is, is Tom, Thomas stood in the corner there. Low punch though. there, uh, Jim, sorry. Yeah, OK. No, I'm just thinking he has the look of a man who's gone about eight or nine rounds instead of just one. The, the way he was looking as he came out of the corner. Yeah, nobody knows the troubles he's seen on the face there as he came out. So now let's see if he's learned any lessons now, Tyson, on uh, fighting in close like this. Because the big man's bone crusher leaned all over him, which uh, made him, well, let's face it, look a bit ordinary, and he knew it. He 
he said he wears black all the time, Tyson, because he likes to look the black bad guy, although uh, people who know him well say he certainly isn't outside the ring, and I agree with that. But inside, I tell you, this fella's an absolute terror. three wins Pinkland Thomas since he lost his championship to Trevor Burbick so he's on a winning roll which is why he got the number one position by the WBC this is for both championships but scheduled for 12 and not 15 rounds now what's he wrestling for like this Tyson Jimmy he could do without this yeah but uh, I think every punch he throws is a knockout punch he's simply waiting for the chance to let one go he's, he's never in any hurry this is probably not worrying him too much it's only the second round and you notice he's trying to push thomas off now but, but thomas is hanging on to him again it's not really tyson's fault this kind of fight well there's harry gibbs from london you can see there's one of the judges but they i would think he won't be needed Thomas looked a bit sluggish in his last fight that I saw here against Danny Sutton. He won it. Well, I don't think he can play Matador too much with that left hand as the ball comes in. So he knows how to get inside punches, Tyson. Puts his head on the opponent's chest and bangs away. He hasn't really taken advantage of that first round absolute superiority Jim no he certainly dropped down the gear again I don't know if that's his plan or it's just that when he gets up close Thomas is grabbing hold of him but uh, as I said he has plenty of time he, every punch he throws is a powerful punch and sooner or later he obviously believes he's going to start getting through again Thomas did well to overcome that uh, really disastrous start there. But remember this, when Tyson has had to go the full distance, he's won so clearly. That's the impressive part of him. Often punchers who go te for 10 rounds and 12 rounds in this case as well, well, they can look pretty ordinary, but he's won clearly on those. So the referee's got to have to work a bit harder, pulling them apart. Yeah, we can't, you can't really blame anyone for the grab and hold of Tyson inside because nobody can compete with the strength or the, the power he can get into his short punches. So any opponent that ends up getting close to him is going to grab hold of him. Uh, it's a bit ridiculous, Jim, when you think in his home state of New York is too young, too young to legally drink alcohol. And there he is now, the heavyweight champion of the world. Mind you, I wouldn't like to be the bloke that refused him. So look at this Thomas now. Is he going to use this effective left hand jab? He's well, very severe uh, warning there, Carlos Padilla, for watching heads. They can take mandatory points off for that now. So any success that Thomas has, the, the crowd are willing to cheer anyway. They want to be with the underdog at six to one on. Although Tyson, of course, is an immense favorite right across the States. And indeed now uh, in Europe. See a little bit of blood in Thomas's eyebrow. I think that clash of heads just looks like a slight little neck back and see a little bit of blood. Yeah, Padilla looked at that a long time, actually. Well, we said he'd have to work hard there, uh, the referee, and it looks as though he's going to. Trouble with Thomas, uh, Jimmy, boxes open to mouth. He has a sort of distressed look about him, even when he's winning. Yeah, I don't think he'll want to get caught in the chin by Tyson when his mouth is open. But, uh, it's possible that in that first round Thomas was shocked with the power that 
that Tyson had because he's managed to get himself back into it a little bit more since then. But he just didn't seem to know what hit him in that first round. The crowd don't like it now. They're, they're remembering Tyson and Bone Crusher and they don't want that. No, he's butting the heck out of you. He's got go, but nail him. But go first, go first. Don't lay in the clinches. I want you to go first out of everything, okay? Guy Bub's getting desperate. He's trying to butt the heck out of you. You know what I mean? It's all right. I want you to go first with everything. If he comes jumping at you, go for him. Let's have a look at this now. He's complaining about the head coming in a bit, Jim. Well, but being that he is short and he's got to get inside, he obviously, even whether he's meaning it or not, he is a little bit dangerous with the head. Okay. Round four. few fighters that uh, said they could beat Tyson, but uh, none have baited him in the way that uh, Thomas did early on in the initial press conferences. So I think Tyson came in with, with a little bit of needle in the belly there. Oh, right over the back of the head. It's just as well for Thomas that. See, Tyson's going to have to throw punches on the way in. If he moves into a clinch then his opponents are grabbing hold of him and stopping them working he's going to have to punch as he moves and he's leaving at that second or so too late well his trainer says he's still at college as far as professional boxing goes and he's right uh, but of course you've got to judge him as a champion jim that's the point not as a learner yeah, well, I would say that's his problem at the moment. He's, he's moving in before he lets the punches go. He wants to let the punches go as he's moving in. Thomas is hoping that he might, uh, Tyson might punch himself out a little bit. He likes the idea of people who have taken him to this, but they've all been six feet five, and he, he does have trouble with tall fighters. He's supposed to be 5'11", Tyson, but uh, there's often a dispute about that. He certainly doesn't appear it now. So he looks as though he's got to work a bit hard for his money. He's had to work to get in shape for this $2 million there, Tyson. Well, Mug's game, you tell that to Tyson, who didn't even finish school and now has bought his first Rolls Royce. We were never sure what kind of Pinkland Thomas would come in tonight. He's had one or two off nights, he's had brilliant times, had a few troubles and admitted to, admitted to being a drug, drug addict at one time and speaks openly about it. To the fifth. Tyson's corner man there, Kevin Rooney, saying you're not using your left jab at all. And he wants him to. But I've got my doubts whether he can actually out jab Pinkman Thomas. That's his best punch. There it is, there. You see, match, match, trying to match him with it. What a chance for Thomas, though, almost. Out of nowhere, he got this to get back to number one, $650,000. The cheap end of the purse, but enough. Okay, okay. 
It's just that bit of rawness showing with Tyson at times, Jim, a little bit of subtlety is missing. Yeah, well, a few times he has been taken into the, the later stages, and uh, it's simply because uh, his technique is a little bit lacking, but normally he makes up for it with, with the power he has. But you can see he's short of ideas here. It's time now to do something else. I think uh, Thomas has got used to these lunges and uh, the, the punches that are coming his way, and he knows what's coming now. So Tyson now has to think of something else, maybe show a feint and try to draw Tyson's, uh, uh, Thomas's lead and come back with counters of his own, but he's a little bit short on ideas tonight. Tyson trying to use the left jab now. That's the, the break up the opponent's concentration with that a bit before he throws the heavy stuff. Although I should think those jab left jabs hurt enough. He doesn't stop saying, watch the head, Jim, the referee, does he? I think he might take a point away from Tyson. Well, it was just a little bit dangerous a couple of seconds ago. Well, he certainly was there, but not with his head. See, I think we've come to expect so much from Tyson now. And uh, when he's not like, getting his punches home, we, we tend to criticise him. But we have to remember that uh, not so long ago, Cl uh, Pinkland Thomas was regarded as the best heavyweight in the world. He, just, he, he wasn't paying attention. He is a top-class fighter. So there's the size of this man's neck bolted onto those brawny shoulders there. In fact, when somebody said, Ray, will you make a comeback, Ray Leonard? He said, well, I could always fight Mike Tyson's neck. That must weigh 160 pounds. Have a look at some replay there, Jim, with the jabs coming in. You yeah, see, that, that was the head again. It was a little bit dangerous for the head that time. That's when the idea warned him. So they're having to change the glove here now. This is this uh, the Henry Cooper Muhammad Ali scene all over again. So they are really whispering the words of wisdom there, isn't he, Rooney? He doesn't want the world and his brother to hear. So the master ceremony has announced to the audience here that the glove had torn and had to be replaced. And uh, it's always good to know they've got the spare gloves on hand. Into the sixth. Well, Tyson tasted a bit of leather with the, uh, the glove on the left hand. I wonder what the new one's going to do. Thomas has been saying that using the, the solid left lead like that is a sort of key to the door and that opens everything up for him, but uh, he just hasn't been able to hold this fellow off enough. And all sorts of advice now coming from uh, outside the ring. And I suspect from a young lady, an actress, Robin Givens, who stars in Head of the Class, who's actually dating Tyson at the moment. See, now, the crowd are burned there, Jim, a bit unfairly, because they're fighting inside, and that proved it. And then they immediately switched to cheers there. 
Yeah, well, just as I said, by Tyson's own standards, this is a, a kind of calm stuff. You would expect to see the dynamite all the time. Oh, he got the job done there. I think he must have heard you there, Jim. What a peach of a left hook that was. And he's going to do it in the sixth because he's only midway through. And this is the way he finishes him off now, the master of the, the finishing stuff. What a fighter, absolute ferocious, and what a game man. He took every punch in the book there, Pinkland Thomas. He is not going to make this in the sixth round. And you really, your heart goes out with him, the, the embarrassment of him being knocked out like that with all the heart in the world. He can't control the legs, but what a tremendous finish there by the Iron Man himself, who's following the loser over to the corner. Once the bell's gone and it's all over, he's the most compassionate guy in the world. Great supporter of kids' charities here. But I tell you, he's, he really is some guy in the ring. What a finish, Jim. Well, it has to be, without doubt, the best finisher in the game today. One good solid punch got through, shook Tom Thomas up a little bit and then over they came. Every punch, every punch was uh, meant to nail him to the floor and eventually over he went. A tremendous finish from Tyson. There's manager Jim Jacobs there. Just whispering in his ear, you can make a few more million sound well done. There's a very close-knit uh, corner there and there's two doctors of the Nevada State Commission working there in Pinkland Thomas's corner. Well, what a fighter, and I emphasize yet again, Jim, 20 years old, and here's the finish. See, once he gets the opponent in trouble, every punch that comes over is a finisher. It's a cracking uppercut, and uh, set to come in with the rest. And we look at another angle. I mean, his head almost departs the shoulders there, Jim, doesn't it? He's just got no chance. And what a brave guy. He took some really hard punches before he went down. Look at that, absolute on the button. And you knew he went down there, his, his head flopped like Wurzel Gummies there, and he couldn't get up. Jim? Yeah, every single punch from all angles, and he gets full power into everyone. That, that was a signal, the punch that came up the way, and then uh, overcome the left hook, and that was all over for the night. And once again there, uh, this overhead shot. Now you can see the real ferocity of this man in action. So here's Tyson's reaction then, and he's talking to my colleague, Larry Merchant. Mike, until the end, that was tougher than it was supposed to be. Was it tougher than you thought it would be? Mike. We'll fight, man. We'll fight. Thank you. We'll, we'll fight. fight also. It's my pleasure to give you a shot at the title. Yeah, you deserve it. Answer the question. Thank you, let me start again. It, it looked like it was much tougher than it was supposed to be up until the end. Of course, but you know, I saw in something in previous fights he would get tired. And I said, if I knock him out early when he tired, he won't have no defense and it'll be spectacular. And I knew he would get tired somewhere around the seventh round. Because I saw him last two fights, he was gassing for a little air. You said before the previous round that you thought he was getting tired. I knew he was getting tired. But he seemed to establish his jab pretty well and frustrate you quite a bit while you were trying to box with him in those rounds. Oh, as you know, no. But as you know, I was getting my jab off too. And as you know, he has a great jab, like everyone know. You know, and he's a great fighter. And I feel I'm the best fighter in the world because I beat the best fighter in the world. Everybody gave him the regards. Do you feel he was the second best heavyweight out there? Absolutely. Now I proved it. Was, when Kevin said to you before the round, start throwing punches with mean intentions, Sounded to me like he was really saying, forget that jab I've been telling you to throw he, all this no, time. No, no. <laughs> he wanted me to use the jab, but I was trying to convince him, which is my fault, and I should never do that. He was getting tired. Now you say, give me one more round. Give me one more round. Now do whatever you say. OK. Mike, let's take a look at the knockout sequence of punches. You describe it for us. Well, I saw I, I could sneak the uppercut in there, and I was just working it to the body, to the head. I saw he was hurt, and I just put everything together. He was tough, but I said, I'm going to put him together. And as you see, I'm putting him together, boom. You hit him some decent shots Weaver. up to then. Were you surprised that he took him as well no, as he I knew, did? I saw him fight Weaver, and Weaver's the greatest knockout puncher around when he was fighting. And he took Weaver's best shots. What is your feeling of satisfaction uh, compared to the last time we had you here? Well, I opened up, and I was using my head more. And now, when I go to gym, I don't have to listen to too much criticism, even though I'm going to hear it. Well, Mike Tyson might have dispensed. <laughs>